Welcome to Rural Health Pulse. I'm Jim Kinnear, Chief Human Resources Officer at the Indiana Regional Medical Center. In this series, we focus on ideas and stories impacting the health of our region and explore the programs and initiatives designed to improve health care and wellness. This podcast is a collaborative effort of IRMC and Indiana University of Pennsylvania. In this episode, we are discussing robotic surgery with our guest, Dr. Dan Clark. Dr. Clark is with Indiana Regional Medical Center, where he is the co-director for operative services and a national proctor for robotic surgery. Dr. Clark, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. And today we want to talk a little bit about your role with robotic surgery. Uh, can you share a little bit about your background and what you're currently doing in that area? Well, sure. A lot of people think that we just like jump to robotic surgery. And it's been a long time in the making. Uh, I've been doing minimally invasive surgery, uh, which is laparoscopic. You know, lapro means abdomen. Scopic means putting a scope in the abdomen. We also do it in the chest. That's thoracoscopic. And when you do it in joints, it's arthroscopic. You know, and so we've been doing minimally invasive surgery with small incisions, you know, dime-sized incisions, putting cameras in, and using instruments inside the abdomen and inside the chest since the early 90s. You know, gallbladder is the one that everybody's familiar with. You know, that came out in the late 80s and was generally accepted and widespread training was done in the 90s. And so that's four little incisions. You put the camera in and you take the gallbladder out with small, long instruments that have on the tips, they'll spin and open and close. But that's it. That's the amount of dexterity you get with them. And you're looking up on a screen. You know, you're, so you have your hands on the instruments, but you're looking up at a TV screen. And it's high def, it's flat panel, high def. It's beautiful high def now, but when we first started, it was cathode ray tubes. And when you hit the cautery, you'd get all the interference in it. So it's really come a long way. But back in the early 90s, when we were first doing gallbladders, you had to grab something and say, okay, everybody, nobody move, hit the cautery, and then you lose your vision because it's like the static when the channels used to go off the air. Then you'd let go and you'd see it. Now none of that happens. You know, it's beautiful high def. So that's laparoscopic, you know, more arthroscopic or thoracoscopic. And I started doing colons in 1993 laparoscopically. And I've been doing a lot of foregut surgery and things like that since 1993. I take spleens out this way and things. So I've been doing it for a long time, almost 30 years, you know, that I've been doing the advanced laparoscopic surgery. What the robot is is that it's advanced technology. It's better instrumentation. It's not a new way of doing surgery. We're doing laparoscopic surgery. We're making small incisions, dime-sized incisions, putting the cameras in, putting the scopes in, you know, the, the, what we call the trocars where the instruments slide in and out, just like we've been doing for 30 years. But the difference is now we hook these instruments up to the robot. And the robot has four arms. It gets wheeled over the patient. You attach these instruments to the robot. And it's a system of wheels and pulleys. And so it's, it's to take the, you know, aura away from it. I hate to do that because, you know, it sounds cool, robotic surgery. But within the cassette that attaches to the arm of the robot is a system of wheels and pulleys. And that goes down through the center of the instruments. And now it gives you much more dexterity. That allows for a 360-degree range of motion. So anything your wrist can do, now the instruments do inside as well. So instead of a straight stick, as we call it, that opens and closes and spins, but has no bend or, or flexion to it, now we have instruments that they spin, they open and close, but they also have 360-degree range of motion, just like your wrist, your natural wrist. And on top of that, when you hook it into the computer and the robot, it increases the visualization because we no longer just have high def flat panel, we have high def 3D full immersion visualization. So it's like you stick stuck your head inside the belly because now you get the full contours, you get the depth perception, you can see all the different edges and, and you know, because the abdomen is not flat, you know, but we were doing flat panel. And it's funny, after all those years of doing laparoscopic, you forget what you were missing. You know, your mind can accommodate for amazing things. And we were doing flat panel with straight stick surgery, you know, and I always tell people, I heard this from one of my fellow robotic surgeons, it's like tying your shoes from up here with two sticks, you know, is the way we were operating laparoscopically. 
because that's the dexterity we had. And I could probably do that, you know, because I do tie laparoscopically. But now take it and you have these two sticks, but now they have wrists on them, you know, and everything. So that's the difference with the robotic versus laparoscopic. With the camera, I get one camera for each eye. So it gives me binocular vision, and that's what gives me the 3D depth perception. So it's better visualization, better dexterity. It's just a better instrument and a better way to do surgeries we've been doing all along. And the other misconception is some people think that, you know, I just program the robot and sit back and have a cup of coffee and, and let the robot do the surgery. Now, we're far from those space age type of things, you know. Um, everything is controlled by the surgeon. Um, we sit down at the robotic console, slip our hands in, put our head down in, our eyes go in, every movement is us and the, there is no delay there is no you know transition from when i'm doing something here till it gets to the robot it's instantaneous what i'm doing with my hands those instruments are doing and on top of having the 3d i also get up to 10 times magnification with the robot so small little vessels now look like hoses you know and so we see better so we think that's going to translate into better outcomes. As a matter of fact, a lot of data is coming out that it is better outcomes for different types of surgery, including gallbladder, colon cancer, and things like that. Um, it makes it easier to get into tight spaces. You know, one of the things that I do is a lot of colorectal cancer. And the rectum is an especially difficult one because if you can't get beyond the tumor, you're giving somebody a permanent bag, you know, a colostomy. And the robot can get lower than any other mechanism. It can get lower than your hands. You know, the pelvis is a round tunnel that goes through there, and the rectum goes in. At the end, it takes a turn up, and you have the pubic bone in the front that you can't get that turn up laparoscopically because they're straight sticks. Now, with the robot, because of the wrist, you can turn it up. We can flip the camera upside down, and we can be right down on the end of the pelvis right on the muscles of the pelvis dissecting with the robot that you would never see or be able to get to laparoscopic. So a lot of times we had to convert those patients to an open incision, a traditional open surgery. And even with that, you have your hands down in the pelvis, you can't see. So a lot of it is blind dissection, it's bloodier, so there's more blood loss with open surgery than laparoscopic, it's much more painful. And you can't see those muscle fibers. I can dissect right on the muscle fibers. And you can't see the nerves. I can see the nerves because I can really magnify and everything else. So it's really a, just a better instrument for doing surgery. Thanks for that description. And I think that helped to give a much clearer image of what robotic surgery means. And as the practitioner, you know, definitely heard visualization and dexterity as the two main advantages it gives you as the surgeon and I think you touched on a few of the advantages for patients, but could we elaborate on those a little bit further? Well, you know, to do laparoscopic surgery takes a set of skills, because like I said, you're using straight instruments with just, they just spin at the end. So there was a higher rate of converting people to open incisions. You know, since we started the robotic program here, it, simple operation, gallbladder. You know, the, everybody understands you, you do laparoscopic surgery to four little incisions, take the gallbladder out. So I reviewed, have we made an impact on the transition to open surgery? In other words, we couldn't get it out with the laparoscope, and I had to make that big incision underneath the right rib cage to get the gallbladder out of there. Prior to robotics, we had a 20% conversion rate on, not every day, but on the acutely infected gallbladders, the one like I just did before coming here. Um, you know, these gallbladders are not your easiest gallbladders. They're stuck in, they're inflamed, they're swollen. You know, you dissect along them, it's like dissecting in water because of all the edema around the gallbladder wall. So it makes it more difficult. Well, with the straight instruments, you're right on top of the gallbladder and you can't see as well, you can't dissect as well. So we had a 20% conversion to a big incision to get that acutely infected gallbladder out of there. In the first year after I came here, we looked back, we had a zero conversion, and we actually did more. So we had a higher number, yet we had no conversions to open surgery. And if you can keep it at minimally invasive with the small incisions, the recovery is just so dramatically different, you know, every aspect, not just pain, but time in the hospital. If you have to cut somebody open to get their gallbladder out, 
you're talking minimum three to five, sometimes seven days post-op in the hospital. If we can do it laparoscopically or with small incisions and just use the robot as a tool to accomplish that, you know, the patient I did today who came in last night with a badly infected gallbladder, we'll keep her overnight for antibiotics, but she'll be able to go home tomorrow morning, you know, and she has four little incisions. Um, the other thing is in, in obese patients, if you do an open incision, you're talking about hernias down the line. You're talking about wound infections because we're taking an infected gallbladder out through that wall, that incision. So a big open incision that has a higher risk of hernias and infections. So with minimally invasive and robotics, you have far fewer hernias, far fewer infections as well, as well as far fewer pain, earlier return to work, earlier return to normal function, less hospital stay, less cost to the patient because they don't have a prolonged hospital stay. It costs the hospital more, you know, and we don't get paid anymore for doing it. That's the, you know, the way they do things, and right or wrong, new technology comes along, and there's a new code for a surgery. The insurance companies don't pay you more to do that operation, even though it takes a higher level of skill. You know, they end up usually paying you less than what the prior procedure was. So, um, but overall, for the patient, benefit is phenomenal. It's a great recap of some of the benefits. I'm just curious, uh, is it appropriate for all types of surgeries, or is it more suited to specific types of surgery? Well, as you know, I do breast surgery. So I get questions, are you going to use that robot for the breast? And although there are some places in this country that are starting to use the robot for breast surgery, it's not quite prime time yet. You know? And so, no, it's not appropriate for all surgeries. You know, I could use it to do an appendectomy, you know, but it's a high cost appendectomy in that situation. And most appendectomies, you know, for appendicitis can be done laparoscopically very easily. And it's the same three little incisions without using the cost of the robot. So no, we don't use it for everything. But as I mentioned with rectal cancer, it's had a huge impact of saving people from a permanent colostomy. Um, for colorectal cancer, for gallbladders, you know, for gallbladders, like I said, it's decreased the conversion rate because some people say, well, why are you using it for a simple gallbladder? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, no gallbladder is the same. Sometimes those simple gallbladders are the worst ones we see. You know, the, the, they come in, you think it's going to be a simple gallbladder, and you wonder how that patient was surviving as an outpatient with how bad the gallbladder looked. Number two is that in order to be good at something, you have to do it. So do we want to maintain the robotics just for the worst ones that come in? You don't want to do that. You know, you, we want to do the easy ones as well. So, you know, um, but for gallbladder, hernia is another big one that we use it for. You know, you can do open hernias, you can do laparoscopic hernias. But again, with all the benefits I talked about, when you're suturing the abdominal wall and you have air in there, it's a dome. You know, it curves up. Straight instruments, you can't reach the dome, you know. With wristed instruments, you can. So we can do complex hernia repairs now that used to require a big incision, and we can do those laparoscopically or robotically now. that You couldn't do them laparoscopically. Now we can do them robotically. Well, thanks for sharing those examples and clarifying that. I'm curious. We know that surgeons have to go through a tremendous amount of training. What additional training is required in order to do robotic surgery? Well, first of all, I mentioned that in previously that I, I've been doing laparoscopic surgery since the early 90s. I came out of my residency in 1994. I'm an old guy. I came out of my residency in 1994 fully trained in laparoscopic surgery for not just gallbladders and hernias, but spleens, colons, foregut surgery, you know, stomach surgery. I do the complex hiatal hernia surgery. So I've been doing that for a long time, up until 11 years ago when, actually it's 12 years ago now, which this is 22, I started, oh, I'm getting old, it's 13 years. <laughs> I started in 2009 with robotics. So prior to doing robotic surgery, we're already doing these operations laparoscopically. And as I mentioned, the robot is just a better instrument for laparoscopic surgery. So you have to come out of a surgery residency program already knowing how to do these operations. It's not like we just throw a robot and say, go for it, you know. You have to go to a fully certified residency program. It's five years of training doing laparoscopic surgery. And now across the country, most residencies have a robot as well. Um, we're getting to that point. But if you don't, you come out and you're trained in the laparoscopic. So you have to be able to do the operation laparoscopically. 
And then you have to undergo training on the robot. And there's computerized modules, just like pilots train in the simulator. We have surgery simulators. It's a backpack that attaches on the back of the robot. And you can sit down at the robot and do an operation without operating on somebody. So you have to go through these simulated trainings. And it scores you just like the pilots get scored. You know, and if you fail, you fail. You know, and, it, and you have to do the simulated operations. You have to go through that training. have to do so many modules. And then it, it is really designed after pilot training. Um, and once you pass those modules, then you go and you have to watch a surgeon like myself, you know, at a, a center of excellence and, and um, watch somebody doing operations for a while. And then you go to a lab, a simulated lab, where you do live simulations. Um, and then you come back, and after all this training, the computerized is done, and you've done observations, then you can start doing the surgery. And this takes many months, as you can imagine, to get to this point. And then once you get to this point, you have to have a national proctor come in, somebody who's an expert in robotics come in and watch you and say if you're safe or not to proceed. So you have to get that final certification from the national proctor after you've gone through all the training that says, okay, it's safe for you to proceed. And you usually come in for a day and watch multiple surgeries. And by that point, it should just be, you know, a stamp, you know, a matter of fact that you should get it by the time you've finished all that. Because like I say, you've already done the operation. You're just using a different instrument to do it with, which is what the robot is. Well, a lot of preparation and a lot of practice to be prepared to deliver this type of surgery. I'm curious, you know, sometimes there is a perception that you have to go to an urban setting, a large, big city to get the highest quality of care and the latest in care. What would you say in response to that? Well, you know how I said you have to have a national proctor come in and watch you do your surgery? Well, I'm one of those proctors, you know, and here I am at Indiana Hospital. Um, just like a lot of the minimally invasive, you know, the laparoscopic gallbladder was developed by an army surgeon in a community hospital, not at a university. So universities are not always the first ones. As a matter of fact, I was the first certified robotic general or colorectal surgeon in all of Western PA, the second in the state of Pennsylvania. And I'm at Indiana Hospital. And I got here because I came up here to Proctor. And I was called in, and you guys were starting the robotics program here, and you needed a national proctor to come in to certify the program. And I was that proctor who came in to certify a couple of the surgeons. And that's when the CEO, Steve Wolf, sat down with me and asked me what I thought of our little hospital here. And what people don't understand is that we have state-of-the-art operating rooms here. I don't know how you know better than I do, about five, six years ago, there was a $50 million renovation project that went into the ICU, the ORs, the, the PACU, which is the anesthesia recovery. We used to call it recovery room. Now it's the post-anesthetic area. Um, the whole fourth floor OR suite has been completely redone. And when I came up here to Proctor, I was amazed at the quality of the facilities and the state-of-the-art operating rooms. And the, you had the brand new robot with all the gadgets that go with it and everything. You had more than what I had. And I'm the national proctor coming here to oversee. So it was amazing to me. And it, it reminds me of, you know, the, the movie, Build It and They Will Come. And that was the attitude that IRMC took. And it's not just in robotics, but it's in a lot of areas. And as a result of building it, I came. And, you know, and they asked me to come in and, and take over the robotics program. And it's been phenomenal. And everybody's just been behind us 100%. And I'm happy to say that we added a second robot last year, um, or this year, January, I guess it was of this year, because we were actually the busiest single robot in all of Western PA, Eastern Ohio, and all of West Virginia. Um, that's how busy our program became. And now even we have the orthopedics robotics, the Mako robot. We were the second orthopedic robot in Western PA. You know, so to say that you have to go in the inner city, I was doing it before anybody else in the city was. You know, and so and I've got a 13 years of experience. And now, you know, my partners all have four or five years of experience. And this year we passed 2,200 robotic surgeries. And so we have more experience here than most surgeons you're going to find anywhere. 
Well, thank you for sharing that. And Dr. Clark, thank you for your leadership of this program and initiatives at IRMC. And thank you so much for being a guest with us today. No, thank you. Improving patient care in the rural community hospital setting with robotic surgery helps to reduce hospital stays and recovery times. Rural Health Pulse is a collaborative effort of the Indiana Regional Medical Center, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and the Indiana community. It is produced by Chris Korn from IUP's Division of University Advancement and recorded by the IUP Communications Media. I'm Jim Kinnear. Thank you for listening and be sure to watch for future episodes of Rural Health Pulse.